Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back to, that's a lot louder than normal, uh, the wonderful Wednesday on the family room. I've got awesome Jason over here. That's his first name is awesome. And awesome. his last name I like that. is Jason. <laughs> uh, we're here to, you know, the drill, talk about Sunday's sermon and get a little bit of his testimony because it's amazing and, you know, you're fairly new here. But uh, if I could have about 50 people that have the mentality that you have, we could get a lot done, uh, simply because, I mean, you, you you literally started coming and immediately jumped into serving, and man, just not to pat your butt or anything and butter you up and make you blush, but you have, like, your, your faith and you're already sharing the gospel and praying for people like that's. That's awesome in itself. I mean, I, there's, there's, there's people that have gone to church for 10, 15 years that won't even do that. So let us know where you're watching from. Um, I'll get the announcements real quick. Uh, the family care volunteer thing is still kind of, the sign up is still going on. You can find that on our website at uh, familychurch.social slash events. It's also in the information Center, when you come here this Friday, November 2nd, is the pasta and praise for the men's group. Um, I have heard that in addition to the axe throwing, I think there are a couple other little new games or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's the, the men's group, pasta and praise. We're going to, you know, we're going to do, we're going to eat, share a little bit of like a praise testimony, a breakthrough or something good going on in your life that God has done. The next Dining with Dignity, which is feeding homeless people downtown, that is November 7th uh, at 5.30. The next Women's Fellowship is November 14th uh, at 6.30. We still do have the Women's Bible Study every Tuesday at, uh, I think, 10 a.m., if somebody can make sure in the comments. Um, the Fire Youth Friendsgiving, these are all in November. I guess we're done with October, aren't we? Yeah, because today's the 30th. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the 30th. Um, Fire Youth Friendsgiving is November 17th from 6 to 8. And then the annual Friendsgiving potluck for the main church is November 23rd at 4 p.m. Uh, and we did just have our, our fall festival, which was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun, I think. It was a little more fun than last year, so... It was great, and we had you know a lot of people show up, a lot of people to help. So that was that was awesome. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Again, we're here to somewhat talk about. I always say we're here to talk about the sermon, and then we go off on way different topics. But um, contend episode three. They do not understand from Jude uh, one eight through ten. Um, what did what did you think, man? Yeah, I don't so. want to call you out and say, like, what was your favorite part to remember? Because anytime <laughs> somebody does that to me, I don't remember call, anything. Call me right out on it. So, but, um, uh, no, I, it, was, it, was a, it was a fun Sunday. Yeah, yeah. so I, um, I, I actually invited someone, um, which was great. And I was so hyper-focused on that that I'm, like, trying to find out if he's being receptive or not. And I'm like, at least it's in Jude. So I'm like, okay, I kind of get that, you know. Um, we're dealing you say with, at least it's in Jude. I, so I remember that. Like, to you, that's awesome. But to I've, someone on the outside, and even for, like... Uh, I've at least read it, okay? For like, so regular... Like, no, I'm I've just read. saying, like, because that's not a normal, like, <laughs> church book. And <laughs> at least it's Jude. Like, churches aren't preaching Jude. It's That's awesome. That, I, I mean... It was uh, just funny. It was, <laughs> it was just something that I could... I was like, all right, good. I at least know the topic. I know what's going on. And it's, it's very real, though. It's very important because... Yeah. Like you said, that's what that's the time we're living in right now. Um, prophecies have been fulfilled. It's it's obviously coming to a time where it's like, hey, how serious are you? So hopefully, really serious because <laughs> we're getting ready to go home. I think, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know about tonight or tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Either way, for us, uh, just, hopefully just, for you, if you know Jesus. But if not, you know, make sure you do because <laughs> it's not going to be fun for anybody left behind. But yeah, it's God led me. To the, and I don't even know how, like, I don't know how, I don't even remember how I stumbled on Jude. I was just like, it's clearly God and the Holy Spirit, but. Yeah. 
it was just because I was finishing the last one. I was like, well, you know, what, what do I do next? And then I was kind of like, man, we should talk about Jude and like fighting for the faith because there's so much coming against it right now Absolutely. in society and, and in the culture. And it's just like, man, we, we, we got to be able to fight and understand the reality of it. And, and now seeing how it's all God's timing and God's sovereignty and watching everything come together and where Sunday is headed without, like, without, because it's going to be weird because it's going to sound like I planned it, but I didn't plan it. It was just, we just started walking through this and taking our time. And man, I'm telling you, I, I'm already pumped for Sunday. Like I finished and I started reading for Sunday. <laughs> for this coming Sunday, I started reading last Sunday afternoon when I got home. I cracked open my book and uh, I just read like a couple and I'm like, oh man. And so and I'm, I'm that, That's why I, I love that because <laughs> it's like, I need more people like that in my life because it's like, Dude, this world will this world will get you. Oh yeah, it'll get you real quick if you're not careful. It's like, who are you allowing in? Who's got your ear? What are you What are you doing? And why are we here? And it's like, it's just that constant reminder because if you if you step out of that, you're so quick to to fall right back in. And yeah. That's, yeah, that's even part of my uh, part of my testimony is is a counselor saying you've got to get plugged in, and I'm like, oh, it, it took me a while. I was still running around trying. You know, you feel like that. Trying to, you can't do it on your own. You no. We're, this was designed to be with, you know, in fellowship. So. We're so, yeah, we're supposed to be in fellowship, and then we're literally designed to be with God, to follow God, yeah. to love God, and it's like all of that is in your DNA. Uh, and I got to be careful because I'll start preaching my notes for Sunday, but <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, it's just, that's the reality is God, the knowledge of God and I'm going to dare to say the love of God is within all of us. We are his sheep oh, yeah. and we know his voice. Yeah. So we know who he is. The Bible says, you know, nobody's without excuse because you can see him in literally just creation. Uh, and it's like, I would say, I, I, would, I would say that the love of God, it, it, he, that has to be in you in order for you to have the free will to reject it. Yeah, and go yeah. your own way. So I, you know, it that makes might sense not be. To me. It's, 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 <laughs> it's his world, his design, his rule, and then it's his word. And if his word says that, yeah, who am I to say it's not? No, and I'm like, okay, I'm then I'm not going to put God in a box. That's that's <laughs> that's that's a shame. We can I'm, we're going to harp in on that. I'm going to put my notes over. That's a shame because that's. There's so much in that. Like, this, this is what God's word says. You know, who are we to put him in a box? But you can testify, I can testify that Absolutely. so many people put God in the box. And we have the Bible, but it's like, oh, I don't agree with this. So yeah. we skip yeah. to a different chapter and a, chip, a different verse or a different book. And, you know, we kind of throw that in the back yeah. of our heads so we don't have to acknowledge it and don't, you know, act, we just end up acting like we don't even believe it. Cherry picking, man. Yeah, cherry picking um, for illustration, never instruction. Very, uh, <laughs> and, and welcome to America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that is America to a T. Just we want, we want our cake and we want to eat it too. Like Absolutely. we were talking about earlier uh, before we came on with you guys, just, um, of course, now that I bring it up, I don't even remember what it was. The, uh, uh, like having our cake and eating it too, that's what it was. We want Jesus to be our savior and everybody, you know, oh, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. He's, you know, he's there for me. He'll be there when I'm ready. And we want him to be our savior, but nobody wants him. So well, the, the, not the, nobody, love, the but, love will you know. get you. The, 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 the love is what's got to get you because when you get handed a, a, a list of rules, Come on, man. Yeah. Like, like, your parents gave you that, too, and as you got older, you're like, oh, it's to protect me. And it's like... That was the whole point of... That's what's crazy, and, and I'm guilty of it, too. Like, you go to read the Bible through, and, you know, we get to all of the the, the laws and everything, yeah. and you and, get and, to and Leviticus, law, and you're like, yeah. The law itself <laughs> is really pointing out, like, hey, I am such a perfect God, and this is how perfect you need to be, and everyone, but you can't. everyone stumbles on that. They're like... Well then, I'm not gonna make it, and that's that's, that's kind of the point. and that's where I was at, at what four years old, crying in my parents' room, and I'm like, <laughs> Dude, I'm going to I'm going to hell. I'm yeah, gonna end up, and I don't know if I can say that in live. I, I imagine I can. I said worse, but um, <laughs> I remember just crying, and like my parents, you know, that that was the first little seed, you know, like, hey, 
this, you know, little, little Jay doesn't understand. He's like literally a kid crying. And it's like, you think about that, like, look at these parents. They're, they're you know, to an atheist. They're, look at them making this yeah. kid cry. How That's, dare you? What are, and it's just like, yeah. it's because you don't understand. Like life, life happens to everyone. Crying's part of life. Dealing with, come on, you're not going to give them the full experience of life? Like, this, yeah. this is it. So. Yeah, it's that's that's the thing is is so many there's so many different tactics of how the devil has deceived so many people with and I brought it up Sunday with like that small word and Jesus and whatever else. And it's got to be Jesus. That's actually a great book um, I've got by Tolian Chivijan. Good luck spelling that. <laughs> but <laughs> I just Google even pronounce that again. <laughs> Tolian Chivijan and it is spelled insane. It's he's uh very smart, very smart pastor. I don't remember where he pastors from, but he has a book called Jesus Plus Nothing Equals Everything. Um, great book. I, actually, I should probably go through it again now that my mind has been mm. more renewed than the first time I went through it. But um, just that, like so many people, they try to add to God and we want to have, I mean, you see it constantly in the world, like we were talking about earlier, where it's like, yeah, I believe in God, but, you know, I'm still going to do this, and, you know, yeah. Jesus loves me, so, you know, I'm saved, but, you know, I can still live with my girlfriend, and cheap we can grace. still do this. Cheap yeah, grace. cheap grace, and just abusing it, and we, that we have the, no as the Bible says, the, the law for licentiousness. Mm. Like, people just... They take it as a license to sin, and it's like, man, that's not it's really, what it's, it's for. It's really, then you're your own God, then, if that's the case. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with yeah. that one. But, yeah, no, I mean, that's how a lot of people want to live. We want, we want to be in control of our own lives, and I think that's why a and number of people reject. that thing. Yeah. I, mean, I wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth. I don't expect yours to get clean, so aren't we all selfish? But no, you got to take care of you first. It's that whole concept of the plane's going down. You got to put your own mask on. Let me put my own mask on first and take care of my kid. And then if there's an old lady that I might be able to help, well, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I was reading the, uh, the comments, which I grabbed the wrong TV. I'll have to use my laptop. That's way too small. Um, but yeah, like, like Kelly said, we, we think once we're saved, we have a free pass to remain in sin. And that's a lot of what these false prophets now um, in America. Well, what a stumbling block for preaching. new believers, though. Oh, yeah. That's the problem the false, is they rope the in. Doctrine. We've talked about it. I've talked about it on here, I think, with my dad. And maybe you can attest to this, too, because... Um, where you are at in your walk, and I don't mean that, you know, in like yeah, a no, negative way, but... I mean, I'm, I'll am admit I'm still new at this as far as coming full out, full sent. I mean, I, I haven't, think I haven't read great. the Bible all the way through. I'm, I'm in, I'm in um, Psalms. Yeah? The Psalm. I don't think... What has been... Are you going... Um, just, just straight through? Yes. Yes. Are you following a plan, or are you just like, you cracked open Genesis and just I cracked it open, going, and I'm, don't awesome. get me wrong, I'm rereading it. I, yeah. I know a lot of this went right over my head, but a lot of it sunk in, and... I mean, I went, I went from being strung out on drugs to hearing some sermons to, okay, and all of a sudden I'm like, finally, like, all right, let me, let me get checked into to a, a facility. Let me figure this out. Let me do, and I'm like, okay, it, and I, I, I can tell you this, when you, I'm going to go there with it. Um, when you're coming down off of a drug like cocaine, it's not fun. It is not fun at all. <laughs> I run, wouldn't. You know. run out. You run out, and you got the jitter, and you're you're not even comfortable in your own skin. You don't want to be seen by anyone. And the only thing that really helped me was a sermon or or some sort of uh, literally truth. Because I'm like I'm like I'm I'm hiding from everyone, and I'm living a big lie. Yeah. And I don't want anyone to look me in the eyes. I want to be away from everyone. This isn't fun. And I just. Whew. So to, to go from that to um, being clean, next month I will be one year entirely sober. <laughs> Dude, is, that is so awesome. I hope y'all wow. give him a clapping emoji so, in, the, uh, yeah. in the chat. One year, yeah, we're definitely, I got to, I want to still take you to yeah, dinner. Be Kelsey sweet. said uh, you wanted to do the Autobahn or something. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That would be fun. Absolutely. We should do that. That would be a lot of fun. And, and, and that was a big part of me. Um, Getting clean, I realize that I, I love, I mean, I'll be honest, people don't drink because they're like, oh, wow, I feel terrible the next day. They drink because they're like, woohoo, I feel great. And uh, you got to, if, you, if you're trying to get clean, you, you got to go do something. You get, yeah. get, uh, go jump out of an airplane, skydive, do something. Oh, I, I, do I love still. adrenaline. Adrenaline's what got me. That's why I own a bike. <laughs> That's, That's why I, I skateboard. 
Um, it's a drug. Coffee's a drug, too. Uh, there's other ways. I mean, if you don't want to do cocaine, maybe you should go down to coffee. And if you don't want to drink, <laughs> you know. Nobody do cocaine. Right, right. Nobody do that. Um, uh, yeah, no, I need to even cut back on, on coffee. Oh, man, it's... Dude, I, I kid you not, when I was getting clean, I don't know what, what was going on. I couldn't do coffee. I couldn't do stimulants. I felt like I was coming down off of like a wicked three-day bender of just terrible anything. And, and I'm, I'm, got, I'm like praying in the bathroom. I'm hiding. But I've also done a lot of stuff to where my, uh, my brain chemical uh, serotonin levels were gone. Everything was gone. I got to a point where dude, I, I came home at 3 in the morning thinking, all right, my... Uh, my, uh, <laughs> sorry here. No, you're good, man. Like, all right, so my, my kid will be in bed. Good. My mom's watching him. So I, I come home and I've got an eight ball on me. And I'm like, all right, I'll just, you know, obviously I'm going to be up all night. Like, whatever. I got this, like, this is mine. Like, whatever. And my kid's, hi, dad, hi, dad, hi, dad. Hi, dad. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. like, <laughs> I didn't know. And he's just so innocent, you know, he's just this innocent little kid. And, and, um, he's like, you want to see this? You want to see that? And showing me all this stuff, and I can't even function. I'm like about to tear up, and I keep running back and forth to the bathroom because I can't come down off this. It hurts so much. And uh, he's like, "Why do you keep going to the bathroom so much? Why do you?" And I'm like, "No, like, what am I doing?" And this is the stuff that I've been battling with for, yeah. for years. And uh, I dump this eight ball of drugs in the toilet, which is like 300 and change. What are just oh. and I'm like, <laughs> ah, like, oh, let me. <laughs> back up from this and I'm like trying to go to bed can't go to bed can't sleep on that stuff man so I'm taking Xanax and uh, acetaminophen whatever and drinking bottles of uh, Jameson to go to bed just somehow I'm still waking up in the morning <laughs> you yeah know, you're, you're, God. I, I was taking, <laughs> taking time on man um, but but what, even when I was clean after that you know coffee coffee yeah. uh, it was something that would trigger a stimulant that I was like I, I don't want this I can't have this and then I started having kidney problems I had a kidney stone and I was like I need water I need, I'm sure a lot of it was due with, with drugs I got a hold of a bunch of ecstasy dries you out alcohol dries you out I'm, I'm eating MDMA like it's candy literally chewing on it because I'm just being a psycho like what is wrong with you <laughs> I think what <laughs> what's amazing is the because you're talking about how you you felt bad doing it even before you were like Christian oh, yeah. and with God and everything and it's just man to me all that here I hear in my head is like you had conviction oh, before yeah. you even yeah. knew Christ like that's how that's how much God like Jude uh, was it one or two you know kept called beloved and kept yeah. like God was literally keeping you so you got for a purpose you've got that conscience is what con science it's against the science that they're claiming but it got his science too and I'm not going to put God in the box God used drugs to get me I don't ever recommend anyone hey if you want to find God go do drugs <laughs> no because you're going to lose your mind and you're, you, you there's rules to this God's got his rules and regulations he's got his parameters he's got his rule book he's got his word for a reason but I'm just saying, God, God's love, he's going to reach you, you know, however he can. And, and, and I was a drug addict. I was a drug addict. I had to admit it. I had to go get help. Um, it, it, you know, I it think that's something off, a lot of people should realize, too, is it's not, you shouldn't be afraid to get help. And you that shouldn't was a be afraid thing. to seek that was help. A big and it's thing. not embarrassing. I think a lot of people probably... Don't go chase help. Oh, as a man, who because, wants to say I'm broken? And yeah, I well, help. anyone, like, you know, I mean, like that, like you're hiding it in the bathroom and you're doing oh, this. I mean, we, everybody hides their sin. It's just how you, it's from Adam and Eve. As soon as they oh, sinned in the garden, they Absolutely. immediately wanted to cover them. And I'm going to preach my Sunday message, but they immediately started <laughs> covering themselves. And it's just, we, from the beginning, we've wanted to hide sin. When Cain murdered Abel, again, you know, Sunday, so shout out, y'all get a little head, yeah. head start, but... You know, he, he, he buries Abel and trying to hide it. Always and it's just, it. there's that conviction. You can't hide it. And it's just, that's how the devil gets so many people by think, you know, making them think like, you're alone in this. You're the only one dealing with it. Like everybody, you know, if anybody found out about this, your life is over. You know, I'm sure these are all thoughts that you've probably had at some it, point. It was and more just, just protecting my kid because I was still, it's, it's kind of the, contradicting to say I was such a good dad and I'm doing this but like I, I still loved him very much I would always like hi, I was always hiding it I was always there. I was like 
that was my main priority. If I'm like three in the morning, even though I'm bendered up, got to get home to my kid, got to do this. No, got to go get groceries. There's no food in the house. I'm not, I'm not some drug addict that doesn't feed his kid and this and that and whatever. And like, yeah, like I'll, I'll, that's good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll suffer a lot. And you know, it was like that whole work hard, play hard, but I was playing around with a bunch of fools being an idiot. And if, if anyone from my past is, is, is watching this, I don't think you're an idiot. I think God can use you. And, um, another thing, like there's familiar friends, familiar spirits, whatever. And I'm not going to say that anyone from my past is like, oh, they're no good for you, man. They've, they'd call, if I said, Hey man, I got a broke, I'm broke down this or that or whatever. They, they'll be there for me. But there is a reason why I'm not linked up with you is because I'm on a different path and I welcome you to my new path. I found, I found what I need. I found a calling. I found, I found love. Um, and how many times have we said, oh, man, I love you drunk or on a high or on drugs, and then, like, the next day it's back to work, back to this, back to that. And some people find and stay complacent in that. But I felt like I was living a lie, and, and, and I believe some of you guys might be living a lie, too, um, just to kind of call you out on it. <laughs> but, but in all sincerity, like, I love you. I'll go, like... Man, if there's a real issue, like I don't, I don't want to go run around and still party and do whatever. But if there's a real issue, man, I'm there for you. I'm there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to be fake in this, and that's why I said I'm not putting God in a box. Is even though I was on drugs, I felt conviction. I've had times where like I felt God there on it, and I'm not gonna sit there and call it out like, oh, it was just the drugs. I mean, I, I literally took LSD, and I felt like that was the tree of knowledge of good and evil because I've never been the same after that. Uh, I had the heaviest conviction of my life during that. From that. I had a kid on the way. I was like I was 16 and I just, it dawned on me that, hey, I am, <laughs> life, if we're live, I'm robbing out of cars. <laughs> I am robbing people from cars. I am stealing uh, whatever to sell to snort Roxy's. Um... I'm stabbing holes in the wall, arguing with my mom. I've got a pregnant girlfriend, and I'm kind of hiding all this stuff, doing whatever I want to do. And it, everything just kind of clicked to me, like, you are on a path straight to hell, buddy. And now all of a sudden I've got this conflict in my head of like, no, nah, no, nah, and I'm fighting, fighting, fighting it in my head. And um, I remember choking, I, I had total mental breakdown. And I'm choking my brother in the driveway. And I'm like, what is happening? And I remember looking up, at this, the, the moon's glistening on me, and yeah, talk to him. And he goes, dude, your eyes were like cat eyes. They were not normal. Your pupils were going straight up and down. I'm like choking him, crying. I'm like, what is going on with me, man? I can't, I can't stop what's going on. And uh, he, he, we, somehow I got brought up to my mom's bedroom, and she was praying the, the blood of Jesus over me and, and, and casting two demons that came out of me. I felt it. I didn't see it. I just felt like ah, convulsing. I'm rolling around on the ground, bloodshot eyes, all this stuff. I'm a psycho at this point, like legally insane, <laughs> legally insane, trying to kill myself too. And um, th- my brother says he sees them jump out of me as I'm convulsing and jump into the mirror. So now my, my, <laughs> my house is swept clean, kind of, sort of. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. I know something's, cr- I could Dude, I'll never forget this night. So it's just, it just is what it is. I'm calling for what happened to me. Uh, some people might say it's, so you science against it, man. This is a God thing. And um, I'm totally just freaking out, though. And um, I'm trying to figure out. And I, I, I remember grabbing the Bible and like, I need to know what all of this means, like right <laughs> now, all of it, because I'm freaking out. And I remember running over next door to my dad's house. I'm just like, read the Bible to me, like right now. He's like, oh, you're out of your mind. Like, what, what are you? And he doesn't realize I'm on drugs. Soaking like, it up. So like, my parents were divorced, but they lived next door for a while, and that was just a, it's a whole other story. I don't even have time for all that. <laughs> um, but I am just freaking out. They called the paramedics because I was kind of trying to kill myself because I'm freaking out, like, all right, God, I'm going to come to see you, man. Like, I don't know what's going on. And, I'm good after and, dealing with yeah, all that. Yeah, I'm out of my mind. Get me out of here. Totally, yeah, get me, yeah, <laughs> get me out of here. Exactly. I could feel the spiritual realm going. Now, I didn't have any hallucinations, like, as far as I didn't see what, because I've done, you think I would learn there, but I've done acid after that, <laughs> and I've seen, it was not the same as that. Like, I kid you not, like, I've, this was not that. Um, but I, uh, the paramedic showed up. I got blood vessels popped in my eyes. Uh, 
And they're like, so let me get this straight. You're not trying to kill yourself. I'm like, no, no. Why would I want to do that? Like, I'm like, like, so I, even though I'm out of my mind, I can still ration, like, bad. Like, calm down. Like, you are going to get Baker acted. Yeah. You know, I still had some sort of control, but, like, around the... So I got to convince them to leave. <laughs> and I'm just trying to, make, trying to make sense of all this stuff. And um, I, did, I did quit. I quit smoking weed. I quit doing a lot of my stuff. And, and I tried to get plugged into the church. I did not understand any of it, though. And I did not explain this to anyone, though. I could, how are you going to explain that to a bunch of, a bunch of people? They're gonna, so at that yeah. time, I, I, I guess I got the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of knowledge. That was the beginning of my knowledge, so I'm trying to figure that out, and, and I kept getting this pinging in my ear that would, like, direct me in certain areas, man. Like, it did, I, I was like, what is this? And I'm like, <laughs> but every time I test it, it was, it was right. It was true. So I'm like, I, I guess that could be part of the Holy Spirit you're that's getting, going yeah, on. And walked along. So I was like, this is just so strange to me. And I'm in, sitting in school, it's like math class, and the teacher's doing a, a thing that said, all right, if the answer's right, stand up. If it's wrong, sit down, whatever, back and forth. I'm not looking at the board, man. I'm talking to whatever's going on in my head and whatever this pinging is for th- three, four day, months by that time. I'm like, this is scaring me. Like, And I'm praying, like, God, please make this go away. I, I am feel insane. I can't deal with this. I cannot handle this. And... Uh, so I'm uh, back to the math class. The, I'm ignoring it, but I'm like, all right, every time the ping goes, I'm like, fine, I'll stand up. Correct, correct, correct. This isn't real. I'm going against it. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down. Wrong. What? <laughs> so I'm going back and forth, back and forth with this, and it's just like such a high conscience, and in, in it's, there's a spirit driving it. Like, just I'm like, feel this, like, vibrating in my head, whatever. And like, everywhere, I'm like, this is just so foreign to me. Like, I, this is like, this isn't, this isn't part of me. And I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with this. And I'm like, whatever it is, it's right though. Every time it's right. And I'm like, it's kind of scaring me. And then I'm like, I tried to look it up later. And like, there was, I guess. Like, I can't put God in a box. Like, so I'm like, okay, I'll leave it alone. I'm trying to find biblically, whatever. But, um, you know, that, that was like the real start of like, hey, there's fear of the Lord. My head's totally cleared out. Um, Matthew 12, I believe. And you get demons cast out of you. You're cleared. You're, you're, you're put away. And, and the demons are cast out and they got nowhere to go. So all my friends, everyone's trying to figure out, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, come back. And I'm like... I don't want candy. I don't want nothing. I want water and exercise and only good stuff. <laughs> That's all I, am, I need. Because I am freaking out, man. And, uh, you know, as, as time progressed, you know, I, I, I have a, you know, my, my girlfriend at the time has a baby, everything, everything's going great. And I get a job. I'm working. I'm working. I'm going to school. I'm working three jobs. And I'm like, like a freaking hero, man. Like, all of a sudden, I get all this clout. I get all this attention. Some of it I don't want. Some of it I don't need. Teachers are saying, wow, you're turning your life around. And, um, you know, pat on the back. It's okay. We know that your situation. Get to school whenever you can. Basically, you passed as long as you can, uh, can pass the FCAT for us. I'm like, just done. Whatever. I passed that. Uh, I, I graduate. Get, um, I get a good job at, at Cadillac. Shout out to Fields Cadillac. Um, <laughs> Shout out. And... Um, <laughs> And, and I'm doing and I'm doing great. And I end up shattering my foot at work as I'm kind of falling back into uh, drugs and not really too much than drugs, but alcohol. I'm kind of yeah. falling back in old patterns because I'm not plugged into church anymore. I'm not doing this. I fell back. Old friends, old stuff, old routine, and I just kind of fell out of it. And um, seen that too many times. So I just. You know, and, and at the time when I was with my girlfriend, I was like, hey, we probably shouldn't have sex and this and that, whatever. And she's like, you're out of your mind. You know, so she's still, she's not on the same page at all as what happened. Like, I don't think she ever could imagine or fathom what happened. So at that point, we we're a little bit unequally yoked, I guess, per se. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going to bash her. We didn't, we did not work out. And she's got an, a, a baby from someone else. And then and that's awesome. And I pray for them. But she's part of that testimony of, I fell into a deep depression from what happened, and man, it came back sevenfold on me. Yeah, it came back so hard sevenfold because now I got money. I can buy drugs as much as I want, whenever I want. She's not there to like really police me, so yeah. I'm out all night. I mean, I woke up in shopping carts by a strip club. I've woken up in a car, didn't know where I was, covered in my own bodily fluids. <laughs> You would think 
that that would have kind of grasped it, but eventually it got to a point where I'm dating another another woman and my kid's thrown in the mix. He's not happy about it. He sees me moving on too quick and that became a relationship based on uh, alcohol and more drugs, more than now I'm introducing her to drugs and I'm like, that's not smart. Like, what are you <laughs> doing? And um, <laughs> she's... She's a smart, she's way smarter than me. She's a smart woman, so she, she, she knew how to control stuff. And situ- She's like, wow, this guy is just out of his mind. And um, I, I remember calling her, like, hey, I'm, I'm finally going to get checked in. Because she, she asked me, like, hey, have you ever dealt with the trauma from your past relationship? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, well, I drink. So, yeah, like, of course I dealt with it. I drink <laughs> yeah, and I do all that's, these, that's the, drink and I do all these the drugs, right of course. <laughs> so, uh, and I remember just trying to explain to her, like, hey, God, like, I can't explain it, but God's calling me away from this. I'm like, still, I'm still a drug addict, and I'm there, and she's trying to help me, and all I'm doing is hurting her. And I, and it, it, I honestly cried so hard when I broke it up with her because she didn't do anything really wrong to me. I mean, we weren't living to standards of how we were doing. Just because it was better than what it was before doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out, and I was like, I, I, the... the when I finally got clean, it was my buddy's birthday. I'm sitting at a, at a bar, still got a bag of cocaine in my pocket. And as I'm doing it, I was like, you guys can have this. This is my last one. I was like, I, I've got to leave. Um, it's like, I, I grabbed my friend. I was like, you ever feel like you're called somewhere else, man? Like, you got to do something. Like, I'm going to end up dead. Like, if I keep on this path, like, I, I don't think God's messing with me anymore because it's getting to the point where I'm passing out. Like, I, I did so much stuff that my brain was just shutting down. I feel slower. I feel tired. I feel weak. I feel, I'm like, this isn't good, man. Like, the light in me is dying. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of where I came into, to, you know, God is love. Because I'm thinking, all right, my kid's probably going to be taken away, all this stuff. I'm going to come clean. I told my ex's mom. I told my mom, like, I got a drug problem. I got all this. And they're like, well, yeah, we always known you had a drug problem. I'm like, no, you don't know. Like, this is a real problem. Like, I'm going to end up. Much worse than you think. This is much worse than what you, yes, much worse than what you think. I was like, I'm not even, like, opening up to people. I'm claiming out. My brother had to come take all my guns away one time and, like, all half suicidal and depressed. And he's like, ah. it's just. That's really it, man. It's here in a nutshell of like, now here I am. Like, I'm walking this out, and, and it's not like, boom, everything's perfect now. I still feel a real spiritual sense. Some of the, a lot of that pinging went away. I'll get some pinging in my ear randomly, and it's like a big time warning. If that happens, I'm like, whoa, I'm not a, like. Yeah. So it, it's kind of it cool, but in a sense, I'm like, is it tinnitus? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what is it? So now I'm like, um, I'm, I'm working that out. I'm working a lot. I am. I am a lot happier. I do believe this is real. If I if I wasn't about it, I would say, man, uh, now nah, just keep your drugs moderate, guys. It's like, no, there's this is real, dude. Yeah. Like this is this is your, your life going on. Like I had it all figured out. You can't you can't retain. It. As soon as you think you got it figured out, you know that's why we're here constantly in repetition with us. We're we are sheep, and I've got a squirrel's brain. So, I'm stupid and I have ADD. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think what's, man, there's so much in that. What is, uh, how you say it? What, what's crazy? Because I, I, always, I always say what's funny, but it's not really like a funny thing. So, it's like a weird phrase. I mean, that's how I, I deal with it. I just laugh at it all. <laughs> yeah. I'm insane. But the... Everyone always is like, oh, weed is like the gateway drug. And I mean, like, I did. I like, yeah, and it gets it. you to other it. drugs. Dude, but then it's like, there's so much me. in that statement, though, because we we're always like, oh, that's the gateway drug, the gateway drug. But it's like, do you realize, you break it down now from the spiritual sense, like the gateway drug. Like, you're talking about LSD and acid, and like, you're seeing things. And like, yeah. Maybe some of that is hallucinations just from the drugs, but like, dude, you're do, what do we there, really man. even know where it's, where it's like you're, you're seeing like the demonic or the spiritual realm and like your brain is, is not going to grasp that. It's not going to fathom that. So it's like the, the gateway drug, like you're taking all this stuff and that is the gateway that you're opening for oh, the enemy to come into your life. And then like that, like... You get delivered, but if you don't get sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit doesn't come in, then yeah, you get that, that the demon comes back sevenfold with yeah. more. I mean, you think of 
the guy uh, that Jesus delivered, you know, and, and then they, they I'm going to say they, because they said their name was Legion, Legion for them. And it was, that was a term for 6,000 soldiers. So there was probably at that's least 6,000 like, demons. More, and it's like, dude, I'm like, was there more in there? Like, how <laughs> wild was that? And I've seen, you know, I've had a friend that did the same thing. Like, I've seen the, the video where he got um, prayed over. It's a good idea, Mitch. Um, where he got prayed over and, and then had demons come out of him. And it was, it was sad that he didn't immediately, because, and you said it like, you know, I should have learned from then. I should have, oh, you think at this point, but it's like, how many times? Because I, I, I didn't yeah, do Yeah, what a lot is of rock drugs. bottom? Like, what is. What is rock bottom to you? Might, might, yeah, might some, not somebody's rock bottom, rock bottom is different than someone else's rock bottom. Like, Absolutely. somebody's rock bottom. In, in Misery Loves Company, man. So, yeah. like, hey, I'm depressed. All right, well, let's come on and hang out. And then all of a sudden you're drinking with them. And, and, I've seen, and you're having a great time. But then all of a sudden. Yeah. I've seen that so much with, with addicts, unfortunately. It's like they they go to rehab or, you know, worst scenario, they go, they go to jail or prison or whatever for a little bit. And then while you're there, you can't really get access it's to like, that stuff. So you clean up. But then they come out and they're like, they oh, I can go hang out with my friends. Yeah, they go they back get, to their yeah, old friends. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, you're not... You're not ready for that. No. Like, no. and, you know, you're like, in, you know, like you were saying earlier, you're inviting your friends to join your walk because you're on a different path. And, and, you know, like, that's great. And, and then it's at some point, and I don't mean this in like a way, because I don't know how else to say it, so I don't, I don't mean it disrespectfully, but it's like at some point in your Christian walk, you'll have that strength where you will be able to go back to them in a sense yeah. and help pull them uh, out of man, the fire. I, I just want one at a time, man. I'm not, dude, I, I literally, so as I'm, this is probably four or five months ago, I, um, I was, heard, I was told you get dreams and visions. Okay. So I'm like, well, I want it. You know, this is real, right? God, like, well, come on, we hold on on me. So I started to get a little, little bit of dreams. I've been trying to write them down. Can't really make sense of some of them, but the, I swear I wasn't asleep, man. I was so tired trying to get on a new schedule and I just like, and it's a funny I knew what it meant because it seems so obvious to me, but it was me and all my friends. We were all little sheep. We're all jumping around. <laughs> we're jumping around having a good old, good old time, like bouncing around. And I'm just like looking down I'm like, dude, I'm a sheep. Like, this is weird. And they're all like running around and they start playing in the mud. And then I was like, oh, that looks like fun. Then all of a sudden they're sinking. I was like, what? And they knew they were sinking. And they're looking at me like, oh, no, almost mocking me. My old friend's like, oh, no, we're sinking. You going to come get us? Oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere in there. Like, you're out of your mind. And I, like, woke up. I was like, and I was like, Dude. Yeah, that one's pretty. <laughs> like, what? So I'm not, now I'm like, okay, well, they are sinking, though. Are you going to go in? Are you, like, are you about, like, are you ready for that? Are you about that? Are you about to, because... When they know they're sinking, when they know that they're in this, when they know, but they're mocking you about it? Like, are you about that? Like, that's the thing. Man, my mind always, like, hearing stuff like that and, and then just with, with other stories and testimonies, and you get that, that, the, the mocking aspect from so many people. And my mind always goes to Ezekiel, where it's just, even, even if they're going to mock you or reject it, it's still, you know, it's, it's our duty, it's our calling to still warn them of their sin yeah. because that way their blood is Not in on our hands. And it's like, it's, well, so, it's like a double-edged sword because yeah. it's like, I, you know, I've got to tell these people, I've got to warn them. But then you have that, that broken heartedness inside of you that's like, I know this is real. If I bring it to them... When I bring it to them, like yeah. I want them to accept it and I want them to believe, and then it's like it, yeah. you still have that, you still have that that room for for disappointment where it's just like, man, like they, what and if they the say no, so, and you're like, so oh. nothing, nothing happens in the physical without first happening in the spiritual realm. So I'm already spiritually getting neglected, and I'm like, ah, and I haven't even, it hasn't happened. Yeah, I haven't gone and done that yet. I haven't, and I and, and I think that's some people are going to reject it, some people are going to go for it, but. <laughs> but you can't stop. No, no. I mean, yeah, that's the, the 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 one of the coolest things uh, that I heard I've heard Stephen Furtick say before, and I'll probably botch it because this was I heard this months ago. But he was you, basically you can't 
there, there is no hope. You can't have hope without also having the room for disappointment. Otherwise, yeah. it's not hope. Because if you're hoping in something, you still have to have room for the disappointment that it might not happen. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just that's why you know I'm always like, man, like, and I've said it up here, like, you can't, you can't lose your hope. Like, yeah, it might not work out. Yeah, when we go, because I've got unsaved friends too, and I, you know, and I don't know if I'm sure you do, but I don't know if people watching do this, but it's like, man, every every time I go to pray now. I will, if I'm thinking of a specific person, I always call their name out specifically, but I'm always like, God, just yeah. send the lost, save my friends. Like, cause I'm not going to remember all, you know, all my friends' names all the time in my prayer time. And maybe that makes me a terrible person, but I'm human. Yeah. But it's like, man, like I, I want all my friends to grasp this and. And I don't know if it's selfish of me, but it's like, I'll pray like, you know, I hope I'm the catalyst in some way. Like, look at the way my life has changed. Like you, like, like I was telling I you, like, really, man, you dude, be I'm, that light. And apparently it's like, I'm on display, see the change. man. And I didn't, I, you know, I'm just going about my that's, day. That's how like, it is. Whoa. You get, you get that, you get the seal of the spirit. And like I was telling you, you know, we're talking about the, the spiritual and the natural aspect of it. You've got, you've got the Holy Spirit in you. And then you're going to have angels that are uh, assigned to protect you. So they're around you. But they're you can't see them. probably pretty tired lately. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Maybe there's some on multiple shifts. <laughs> you can't see them. But then, like, I was telling you the other day with, like, like guys at, at, at your job or guys out in the world, like, you see it where you'll walk by someone. And if they're not saved and maybe they've got a demon attached to them, like, their whole face, like, they just look at yeah. you wrong. And you're like, man, what was that? And you don't realize, like... That's a demon latched oh, onto them. Oh man! Seeing what you've got in you, and they hate you for it. You don't even realize it. And it's like you're a light. You're a walking testimony, and like that, like being a newer Christian, still, you know, whatever. Like you know, next month, uh, one year sober, kind of thing, and you're still that like that new Christian. There's always when you come out of that life. There's always all those people there that are still watching you to see, like, you know, Just to chat, is, is yeah. this real? Like, and I've heard that, when's he going to give it yeah, up? We'll, you know, we'll when, see, when are you we'll going to come back? When are you going to, yeah. you, you know, we, we've tried that Jesus thing before and it didn't work. You know, when's he going to, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying your friends do this, but I'd wager for some people, like, their friends probably make bets. Like, you know, it'll Ooh. last a year. Ooh. It'll last two years. And it's like, bro, you can you can put any number of money on my head. Like, I'm not turning my back on God. I want you to come into the fold. Like, I want to be, I want, oh, I want to be at that feast yeah, with I'm, you. Like, I want to be. Pass me the gravy. I'm, I'm about it, man. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for this. I, I mean, think it's. I hit 30 years awesome. old, and I was like, why do I care what people think anymore? I was like, look, ex, is, like my, my kid's mom already left. I'm a single parent now. I got all this stuff. Like, I already lost it all. I was like, man, I had money and whatever. It was like. Well, at this point, I literally am just the textbook definition of a loser. <laughs> so whatever. I was like, and I'm a drug addict. I might as well come clean and be like, hey, guys, I'm a, a, a winning loser now. I don't know. I don't even know. Because, like, it was so weird because, like, when you're in that lifestyle, like, becoming that good person is like, oh, you want to be good? It's like, it's almost like the... It, yeah, everybody it's like equates not like. Anymore. It's like, wait a minute. That's the that's the. Oh, it's, such it's so a, weird. No, no, don't get me wrong. Thing. I got friends that that are still in it, and they're like, we are so proud of you. And oh yeah. So it's like, and and they get it because like you know, and I love them. I pray for them. Um, but they so said still, still like big events, big events. They call me up. I'm there. If your birthday or something, whatever. But I'm not hanging out. Yeah. Every yeah, that's and good they know that, and I disappear. And like, and that's they said that was my pattern. I was always straddling the fence, in and out, in and out, in and out. And then like that was my thing. All of a sudden, something would break the straw that broke the camel's back. I'd be full send. Like, hey, Jason's back. This wild, and I'd wake up sounding like Steve O, dude. Like, I've been <laughs> up all night, and I, you know what I mean? I just wrecked, just wrecked. And they're like. And they and of course, because who doesn't like entertainment? It's oh like, yeah. There's that cycle. At someone man, else's expense. Yeah. And Meanwhile, like, like oh dude. man, you think you're you think you're having fun. Everybody thinks you're great. Dude, I mean, you ever and been? And then inside, you're like, that my life is terrible. I'm miserable. Like <laughs> you think of. I don't want to talk ill about anybody, but you think of like, um, what was it, Robin Williams? Yeah. Like one of the funniest oh, dudes man. alive, and then commits suicide, and right. then it comes out, and you're like. 
how many people have we seen and I heard laughed of? The loudest, right? The where it's just guy. like we think they're they're yeah. they've got it all together. I mean, inside, you know, it's Fall it's apart. like it's that's that's their mask. Yeah. Is their their happiness is their mask? They get. They're so broken that they want others to be happy. So yeah, they do everything yeah. they can to keep everyone else happy. Even meanwhile, Dude, inside, it's such a weight. Like, this it is, is such a weight. Terrible. It's such a heavy weight. Because but I think happy. I think it's awesome that you've you're already at that point where you're just like, man, I, I don't care what anyone else thinks. And, that, and that's something that I work on because you you can fall right back so easy. It's a constant dying daily, figuring it out, um, in in being bold about it, like yeah. Because how easy? Because some day, you know, you wake up. Some days you feel like I just feel off today, and like, yeah. and like, and then I pray about it. like, even when I don't feel it, like, they like, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, because it's like, where was that fire? Where was that fire? And then you get the doubt, like, man, yeah, see, you're not happy today. That yeah. Christian stuff, right? And like, you, 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 sometimes your own mind's your worst enemy. Like the devil has a field day with it, and I used to just kind of brush it off. And one, like, one morning I woke up and I said, No, you're supposed to take every thought captive and submit to the authority of Christ in, in, in your walk. So it's like, where did that come from? So now I'm like head hunting, like, where did this come from? Like, where, how, yeah. why, where? Rather than just like, you know, because you will just out of nowhere. Like, you have some funky thoughts pop in your head, and you're like, huh? Eh? Like, That's why the Bible <laughs> says to take a, it, take it, and it's a military term too, that captive. Take it captive and, and cast it down. Yeah. And we don't realize, like, that, that the, that's the problem with so many Christians, like on, on all aspects of that, like true Christians, uh, you know, lukewarm Christians, fake Christians, whatever. There's, there's so much that we, we just, there's not enough people grasping the kingdom that we belong to and that we are in warfare, that we are actively being attacked and we can't just stay on the defense. We need to be on the offense and we need to be taking those thoughts captive because yeah, the enemy yeah. comes at you, you know, and he's just throwing everything at you. And that's one of the greatest things that I've heard. I think Mark Driscoll said it when someone was coming to him like he was having suicidal thoughts and, you know, you're a terrible person. He's like, listen to how that voice sounds in your head. He's like, when you look in the mirror and you think about yourself, you're not like, I'm, you know, you, you, you don't think like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm a terrible person or you're not, you, you're not a terrible person. Yeah. You're a terrible person, whatever. And God, God's not going to talk to you like that. Like, yeah. oh, you should kill yourself. God doesn't say that. So it's like, we don't say that. God doesn't talk Such that way. Demonic so that's oppression coming over from, you. Yeah. It's coming from the accuser. It's coming from the enemy. Oh, it's man. coming from it's, demons. Like you, they say you, 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 you. And that was, and that was part of it too. There was a time where I'm like you know, where that's pondering in my head and, and that's when my brother came and, and got on my guns and stuff but I was like, now how selfish of me? How about instead of that I go and serve other people or I, I, since I'm going to die, let, let it be an altar and then that kind of catalyst a little bit into for God, like why not for God? Like, right? Like, why not give your life to someone who actually wants it? Because if you don't want your life and you're that petty right now all right, well live, live for him. Live for your kid. Don't do it for you and it's like you know, why one selfish moment that night? Am I going to let that turn into? I think that's how, <laughs> that's how the enemy, I think, yeah. and I'm not, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm making light of suicide. It's an incredibly uh, depressing thing and just, but I think that's how the enemy gets so many people with that is just, you know, he puts it in your head. Oh, you're, you're alone in this life's now. Cause you know how it is when, when things are going rough, Oh, it's always going to be this it, way. It kind of turns your into a prideful sucks. thing. It's falling apart. It's it's going to get worse. It, you know, you it's always going to be this way. But then when it's good, it's oh, this isn't going to last forever. Like this is going to end quick and it's going to go back to being bad. He always attacks. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because you, you to will the you will hit this like recycled memory of it when it happens. Like oh, you're here again. Like yeah. this will come and it's just this eerie coming in like. You know, see, you're here again. You're always going to come back to this. And it's like, whoa, whoa, where did this come from? Like, it's scary, dude. It's a dark path to walk down. I think a great book for spiritual warfare, what really opened, <laughs> it's weird, but what really opened my eyes to it and like the spiritual warfare aspect, aspect and, and prayer is, and it's kind of hard to find now because it's a much older book, but it's called um, This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness. It's two different books mm. by Frank Peretti. And you can find them on like thrift stores and stuff online. 
but in their fi- their fiction. But when you read it with the eyes of like a true believer, and like your mind is just like God has opened your mind. Uh, to me, I, that that he he must have gotten a lot of Holy Spirit insight onto it because the entire book is basically um, it's a small town, small town church. And then there's like this big conspiracy and you come to find out, you get the aspect of the humans and then the demons mm. and angels that are like, there's all these like petitioning, demons. all these, yeah, there's all these demons yeah. like trying to take over this town for a specific person, a purpose. And they've done it in different places. And then there's the angels that are assigned to the people that are trying to stir them up. So they'll pray. And so it'll stir up more saints and get more people praying and more angels to come for the warfare aspect. And then you just see, like, it deals with, like, possession and stuff. And there's this, the, and, and I know it's fiction, but it makes so much sense. The, the, the demons, like, they get there and they literally, like, latch their talons into people, like, in their head. And they're, like, whispering thoughts to them. And they're, like, shouting wow. in their face and everything and making them, you know, act that way or, or think that way. And it's like, man, like, we just, it there's sounds, not enough people that realize it's real. To me, I don't That's what I'm know. saying. Like <laughs> when you read it, you're like, this is like this has got to be how it is. Like they're here, they're and, and, and it, over your shoulder, just breathing that and stuff a lot into of people you. People kind of brush it off, and they're like, oh well, they don't have any any. That's not real. They don't have power. Man, there's <laughs> they still got power. A lot, a lot, a lot they more don't, power than, they than, still a, got than it. we do. I mean, if we got Christ. Yeah, we got Christ. But are you even like tapping into that? Are you even like praying and interceding for Christ to come down? Because like. Where you know, like Holy Spirit, I need you to protect the blood of my house, protect this. Protect you look like a crazy person. It sounds crazy because by the world's standards, you are crazy. And when you're praying that over your house, you know, oh well, Jesus is here. You know, Jesus is here. It's like okay, well, a mosquito's still gonna fly in your window. You know, he didn't ask who owns the house, what deed. You do you think these demons? Or, or anything that's negative and evil, they can come against you. They can come against Christians. Yeah, they they, I mean, they've, it, they've got power. And without, without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, you've got nothing. Like we have, well, flat out, we have no power against the demons. Yeah, it's, it's, Christ it's God. Yeah. It comes from God. It comes His from God. Like it's, it has I mean, nothing read, to do with us. It's Job. just the Holy Spirit. Read Job. Talk about, yeah. you know. It's... That's just, I think that's, that's the thing. Like there's, you have the one group that acts like they don't exist and just ignores it. You know, the demon, you know, that's not real. Like that's not a thing. And then you have the other side that's like, they make it light like that. Like, oh, you know, they're, they're no big deal. It's nothing, whatever. They're, they're dumb and start saying all this stuff. Like I've, I've called demons dumb before. It was like, man, you don't realize like they're they're smarter than you. They're stronger than you. They've been around forever. Yeah. they, They know everything. Like they know the Bible more than you know the Bible. That's how they can trick so many people because they, they know how to twist things. And you know, you think, I mean like that, they've been around for all of it. And they, they know the ending. They know that they're yeah, going to die yeah. or that they're going to be thrown into hell. Sorry. And so they, they know, like, I'm, they could probably quote the whole thing verbatim if they wanted to at this point. And so that's, I, mean, I think the, that's how they get a lot I mean, of the, the false prophets. the word. They were, they were, you know what I mean? They were there before it. Like, they knew Jesus in eternity. It's just, man, there's, that's just the thing is people need to realize, like, the demonic realm, the spiritual realm is so real. It's, it's more real than this because... This goes away at the end of time, and then we're all yeah. in that new creation. So I, I would wager, you know, the spiritual is is more real. And you said it earlier, like what happens there bleeds into the natural. Like, yeah. I can't remember the website I was starting to dive in on, and then I stopped because I had other things to study. But I want to, I want to take a, I want to take like a deep dive into. The like not just like World War One and World War Two, but like all the like like conflict, like bigger conflicts, not just like little skirmish kind of things, but like the bigger conflicts in the world that like everybody was watching, and then find out what was happening within the church at that same Mm. time, because that's that's where my head goes. Is you know what if there's a war, there's obviously a big giant spiritual war going on. So what was going on within the body of Christ at that time? What was happening that 
heaven and hell were waging just massive war and it was bleeding into the natural where humans were attacking each other as well and you had you know you think of yeah, yeah. Um, World War II like with, with Hitler and then like the allies like they're going against the axis, the axis of evil like I mean what was that that was all anti I want to say semitism was yeah. hatred of, of Jews of the Jews and it's just like go figure like God's chosen people like boom it's been ever since time, ever since, you know? Yeah, it's, it's why that's what, the, and that's what I love about the Bible. Cause you could just keep reading it and, and watch keep reading history it and, keep reading it and, and you can just, Unfold. yeah, you watch, you can, I mean, if I, I, I got a book on revelation, I need to start going through again because it, we're living it out at this yeah. point. And it, I mean, it's just that, like, it's not, it's not just. Like I say all the time, it's not just a history book. It's what always happens. So you study it and you learn it and you can see so, what's going on and, and alive, have that alive understanding. living word, yeah. Yeah, and you can have the confidence as a believer. Like, you can walk into places. Like, you can walk into your job. You can walk into a store and know, like, and have more, not arrogance, but just more confidence because you know that God is within you. Like, no man, oh, man. can and do that's anything putting on that, to that's you. putting on your full armor in the morning with through Ephesians. I mean, I... When I actually remember to do that, it's like, all right, I'm going into this, and I'm yeah. and I'm like, all right, somebody yells at me, something goes wrong, something goes sour. I'm, I've got eternity mindset already in place, so it's like, when I leave the when I leave the house with an eternity mindset, it's it's really any day or anything that's going on doesn't scare me as much, or or the cares of the world aren't really there. Yeah. So, I think that's what I'm trying to get or not get to, but dive deeper into is just getting more and more eternally mind minded where you're just constantly focused on eternity because we need this to be and there's not enough i mean it's a spec but it's a, a a fraction it's a fraction of a day in heaven is like a thousand years on yeah that a, a day one day with the lord is like as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day we just—I mean, God is outside of time, so it's nothing to Him, and that's why we get impatient. And, and because we, yeah, we, we try we to pray. put Him in this box. Too. We try to put Actually, Him in a box. Well, I prayed for it, and it hasn't happened. Yeah. It's been—you know—three days, three weeks, three years. But it's like either you've got to know, and you didn't realize it, or you've got to wait, or you're. Yeah. I think a lot of times we we go with we go to God with just like the, the grocery list of yeah. I need this, I want this, I need this, God do this, God do that. And it's like, man, if we just start like truly praying for his will yeah, like, and just praying like God help, help my prayer life begin to align with your will. Help me start praying that way. And then like study, go to Matthew um, six and read, you know, the Lord's prayer. And it's not about reciting it. It's, it's a template. It's, it's, it tell, he, Jesus says, pray like this. Mm. And I want to break it down one day in here for the sermon, but man, it's just pray like this and then realize what it's saying. It's not like, yeah, you can quote it all day long and you can pray it, but like you, you have to go deeper than that someday. We, we can't just stay, yeah, yeah. you know, on the surface of the well. We, we have to dive down. Well, yeah, well, so it really, I mean, it, it boils down to a true relationship as you're praying, because if you're just cut and dry, I mean, yes, know your scripture and know how and where your, your, your help comes from and, and where you're going with this, because it's, you know, this that's part of the relationship is knowing his word, his love letter that he wrote to you. But I mean, my kid called me out on it when I'm, when I started changing, he's like, you're being, you're just like, you're just religious, man. It's annoying. And this and that. Cause I'm like, no, we're going to pray over our food and do this now and do that. And what? And like, I'm just trying to be like stern parent because I care about him. I love him. And even I'm fighting it because you know, it's like, it's, it's still a dedication. It's still going through the motions. I got work. I got this, I got that. And all this stuff's piling up, but I'm like, all right, God, I'm trying to get closer to you. And it's like, he used my kid to call me out. I was like, what are you doing? Like this, that's, that's religion. Like, this is what everyone's mad about. That's why everyone's like, yep, yeah, you Christians, you, you're, you just were pointed like Catholics pretty much. And I'm um, like, you know what? You're right, man. So like the prayer, the prayer life changed to where it was like more personal. Like, Hey God, I'm, fed up with this and with my mom with struggling with this and with that and you know um 
I understand that you're not a genie, but what what are you calling me to do? What what am I supposed to be doing right now? Like I don't even know what I'm doing, God. Like and it just got real and honest and raw and, and um, my you know especially with my kid too. I was like, hey, I I don't know what he's going on at school today, but Lord, as I drop him off, I pray for a good day. Find somebody that he can have an impression on or him like it just real real stuff. And I just all right, Lord, well protect the school and have a good day in Jesus' name. Bye. Like yeah, uh, very dry, bland. Um, it's a you, you think about it. It's it's a you get routine. It's a, everything is with the Christian faith. There, you you only get deeper by discipline. Yeah, and no one it, no one likes discipline. No, like you don't like getting a spanking from your parents Gee. when you were a kid. You don't like getting in trouble in school for doing something, even though you did something wrong. When you get caught, you're still like ah, like you know you. You feel bad, and then you almost you, you get more embarrassed because, like, yeah. you're just like no yeah. one, no one likes getting in trouble. So you don't like discipline. Like, I mean, some people like attention, but <laughs> yeah. But then you know, well, like, we all you think with this, uh... with with like the the gym, it takes discipline. Oh, yeah. It takes discipline to results. work out on a on a regimen on a routine. It takes discipline to eat right and eat healthy. It takes discipline, like. Even for, you know, someone like you, like, getting out of the, the drug world and, and recovering from all that, like, that takes discipline oh, to cut off, like, the past to absolutely. a certain degree. Dude, I've had you know, like, nightmares, nightmares yeah. of smoking crack and doing what I do, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, that's, <laughs> and I, you know, that's just the demonic, like, trying yeah. to put it back in your face, trying to get you to crack. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, man, I, I'm happy to see, you know, just from the conversation we've had, like, your, your faith is rock steady on that. What's and, what's what's really awesome is, uh, you know, God will use anyone as a catalyst to, to get you to. Um, you know, the, there was a new guy that started at my job, and, you know, he he kind of came in. He's a Christian, but, you know, he's struggling and stuff, too, which, which we all do. But um, I remember giving him a ride, and he was really impressionable on me. Like, I made a really, like, he looked up to me, and... I actually I came here. I came here. I was still doing drugs. I actually had a case of nitrous oxide in the back seat, hidden from inhaling whippets and stuff. And uh, <laughs> so I, um, <laughs> I, I was just you know I felt I felt way off in check. I took my kid, and he went to he was arguing with me like tooth and nail. I'm not going in the little, you know the little kids area and section. I'm, I'm I want to sit with you. I was like no, you're going go. So we got like a little pamphlet of something that I, I didn't even read. I was like, cool, you know, at least I got my kid here. Because I felt like a dirt bag. I'm like, I got to get my kid to church. I gotta, yeah. Whatever. So I still I always try to do the right thing as a parent. So uh, my, my friend looks at this and goes, what is this? I go, oh, that's just some Christian thing that I got from my He goes, you go to church? I go, yeah, I go to effing church. And he's like, okay, you wouldn't take, I would never take you as that type. And I was like, why? You don't think I believe in God just because I... Beep, 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 like just going haywire, and he's like, "No, I didn't. You don't look like you would." And I was like, "I got offended, but he convicted. He got yeah. him to convict me, and it was someone that, like, you know, he's kind of like looking up to me a little bit. But re- re- reality, I'm looking up to him the whole time. You know, like he's he's a, he's a good friend of mine. We haven't hung out in a while, but his whole family has been praying for me and helping me. So the power of prayer is real, man. Like you get that good influence on you, and God used someone that I would least expect as a catalyst to get me back to him." So it's just like you never know who you're talking to. Yeah. I mean, well, you think even uh, Balaam in uh, Numbers 22 and 20 or Numbers 22 to 24, shout out to this coming Sunday, uh, where God literally used a donkey to talk to him. I mean, like, <laughs> it, that's the thing. God, use, God uses whoever and uh, whatever yeah, right. he wants to catch you, oh, to he's talk trying to, to put you, him in a box. To, yeah, all he's trying to put him you in can't a box. put him like that's it's yeah, like he's everything. Like, man, I was, made this box. I'm out of this. Box. Yeah, like he, <laughs> he made everything, and then like we sit oh, here wow. and you know the whole like oh God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. But it's like people still expect like with, like with a pastor, they expect you to if you're gonna get up there and preach, you need to have uh, you know like two different degrees and have this amount of schooling and have this under your belt and have this and have that. You need to dress a certain way. You need to read this translation. It's like y'all are putting everything in a box and you look at how God literally picked everyone in the Bible. I mean, you look at David was still a boy right. and he gets anointed to be king. And then even though he's anointed to be king, Saul still has to ride it out until David's yeah, there he's and got, ready he's until God's the... done. <laughs> you look at, at Moses. I mean, like what did Moses do? I mean, you know, his, his sister, 
or his mother puts him in the basket and then his sister, you know, helps him luckily get raised by his mother for a time. And then he goes and he's with Pharaoh's daughter and gets raised. And then when he's 40, kills a man, runs off out of fear and lives in the desert for 40 years. (laughs) And then God calls him and it's like, okay, what did you do? Like you, you killed someone. He's got, he's got no real, I mean, I don't want to say no real biblical training because he was raised a little bit of Hebrew. So he was aware yeah. of that and of his people. That's why well, I, mean, I, broke I think that him, was part of his training is with him, him disappearing. You know, you, yeah. You well, well think about it. He, he was, he was in the desert for 40 years yeah. as a shepherd. I mean, how about eating that? sheep? How, and then yeah. when he brings the people out of Exodus, yeah, he's a the shepherd. Num- the numbers are wild sheep. too. The, 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 yeah. It's, it's, God is just so awesome. That's but I mean, yeah. That's, uh, it's just, I, I love it. I love that God uses anyone that he chooses. It just, and like that, like the darkest, I mean, you think about it, like the darkest stories, they make the best testimonies. Right. Like you listen to, you know, like you're like, mine is There's whatever. But it's, you listen to yours, and you're like, I was doing this and this and then, blah, blah, blah. And Dude, it's like, man, like. I, we don't have enough time to tell you this. <laughs> We're freaking rolling casters like this big for industrial for food bank I, down a hill into oncoming traffic and stuff like, <laughs> my gosh like it's just the list goes on I mean there's stuff that like I still I'm like oh I hope that person's not dead or what or like what ha-, like you know what I mean yeah. just like stuff like that I, I'm not saying I killed a man I'm just saying like <laughs> there's stuff that I've set up to where it was like catastrophic and walked away drunk or whatever and totally forgot about it. I'm like oh whoa I've, yeah I hope everyone's all right, you know. Well, that's like uh, the you know? one of the pastors I listened to that he was he was robbing people and yeah, and, and yeah. all the drug culture and everything and then he was literally driving somewhere drunk with his friend with a car full of guns to go have a gunfight and they crashed off of a cliff and both of them came well he came out I don't know about both but he he came out without a scratch and that's the whole thing from Jude kept like you were kept yeah, I was yeah. kept in my own way that guy was kept in in his own way like God has these purposes for people and he will keep you in order to do that purpose and like it, it's it's so beautiful that it's just the messiah is never afraid of our mess and right. everything i mean you think of the whole time you're talking, all I could think of earlier was the story of the prodigal son from the prodigal side where, you know, he gets his inheritance and then he runs off, squanders it all, spends it all on, you know, think about it nowadays. It would be like somebody getting their, um, getting their inheritance and then going to like Vegas and then just like oh, like unleashing on all the drinks and yeah. sex and drugs that they could do and then it all just falls apart and then now they're just like a homeless person because that's pretty much what he was and he was literally it was so bad that he was in the pig pen which they were which yeah. is more humiliating <laughs> because they're unclean animals to them and then he's eating pig food. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Too. And then he it's runs back Jewish. to the, well, he goes back to the dad and he's just going to beg for like being a servant. Just like, help me, just let me be back here, even if it's as a slave. And the father goes running to him, which in their culture, they would not run. Like yeah. him running was humiliating. And I think that it's just such an amazing picture of, of God that he's not afraid of your mess and he chases after you like what would pure, pure love. people don't do that yeah your friend somebody close to you like screws you over and just leaves you to the dirt leaves you to the dust and they're just like man I'm out of here and like just breaks burns the whole bridge of your relationship yeah. and then they come back to you after just terrible, terrible, terrible things, and they want to be back in your good grace, like 90-something percent of people are going to be like, yeah, that's not happening, dude. Like, you're dead to me. Like, you know, and it's like, dude, no, God God chases you and goes after you. That's just, it's beautiful. That's why I love... Like your story, yeah, I it love totally testimonies. Totally goes against the grain, man. Yeah, like I love testimonies. It's like I had a horrible life. It was like I was, everything was falling apart. I was doing as, as bad as you could imagine, like blah, 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 gang bang, like whatever. And then to see those people on fire for God, being used by God is like, it's, that is just, that is, it's beautiful. I, I saw a video the other day of a guy in a prison jumpsuit on a prison bus sharing his testimony and it's like this like he's still dealing with the consequences of his sin because we have to yeah 
but he's saved and God is keeping like that. It's just beautiful. Like, and it's, there's such, there's such freedom in it, man. The, yeah. It's, 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 that's the, it's, it's the only it's real way to, to live. You, and there's man. not enough it's people that realize you. it. You know, there's not enough, not enough people that realize it. Like this is, that's why I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta wake people up. We gotta reach because they're, they're missing out. And then the other side of it, like when eternity comes, you're really missing out. I mean, how cool is it that God's kind of like, hey, um, you, you get to build part of heaven. Like, you like that friend? You like that? Do you like, even if you don't like them, go to, see, so you start yeah. getting this relationship with them, but it's also like, you want to go save all your friends? And, this, and like, that's all of a sudden where it's just kind of starting to shift because, like, I thought they were my friend. They don't get it. They don't, and you, you know, there's a lot of people that have friends that are not on the same page, and that's okay, man. I, we're going to have disagreements, but that's awesome. That means I care about you and I love you. Yeah. Enough to be like, hey, man, welcome to my mind and welcome to my world. Like, let's meet. Let's meet in the middle and talk about this. If you can't have a talk about that, are you even really friends? Yeah. No, that's, uh, yeah. To be close and deep friends to, in order to have just deep, because I, I, like, I, I suck at small talk. I like, you know, let, let's, let's dive like this. Let's dive in. <laughs> tell me, tell me your deep, dark secrets. <laughs> nice to and let's you. just tell break it your... apart. Let's have like a therapy session and just walk through everything about your life. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't, I, I can't get by, like, if we're just like, hey, how's the, you know, what'd you yeah. do today? Like, that's like pulling teeth for me. But when mm-hmm. we're like, let's crack our brain open and just walk through things and talk, like, then I'm like, I'm game. Let's go. I mean, so I, I, I love it. Real. And I'm glad you're here. I mean, I still remember the first day I talked to you <laughs> and Kelsey came to the office. She's like, this guy out here, you gotta go talk to him. And I was like so stressed out. I'm like, man, I don't want to talk. To like, just be honest. Like, yeah, that was it. Like, I was like, I am. I've got all this going on. Look, I got, like, I got work up to here. I'm I got pretty this sure going. the kids are. It was the first day stuff. I was using paper notes, so I'm already like stressed because I have no idea how that's gonna go. Yeah. I'm like, the last thing I want to do right now is try to, to in, not just, not like yeah, you, but yeah, just yeah, like anyone. Like, I'm just right like, now. let me lock in. I was like, nah, yeah, whatever, That's and it was funny. great. And then I think the countdown was on, so I had to like cut you off or something. But then you know, it was, God's brought every everything yep. so so far. So I love it. We can uh, we can come to a close because we're right. we're going Fair pretty long. Um, that's that's the hard part. See what I'm saying? Like once you get going, you're just yeah, like, oh, yeah. we could do this for four hours. Yeah, for for everyone online, I'm like, no, turn that off. <laughs> I don't want to see my face and like hide this. I don't want to read comments. I'm a little nervous, but like I just no. Honestly, once sometimes you get going, you can't shut me up. Dude, it's easy. Honest. Yeah, that's how I am. That's why they have to do a preaching clock for me. Because <laughs> I'll just keep what are, going. What are we negative? We're time negative thirty right minutes. Now. So we've gone for uh, an hour and ten minutes because I have the clock for forty, okay. and we never stick to it. Um, with that, I'm excited for Sunday for continuing the series that we didn't say anything about tonight. <laughs> but that's fine. I don't. It's not whatever. I like just getting on here and, and Man, having conversations. Get these people here if they want to see. It, they got to come. I mean, yeah. No, I, I am. I'll tell you, I'm having a blast with this entire thing, and to not be, um, not be, not not rushing. That's good. To get through things. That's how um, I felt when I was trying to read the Bible. Like, yeah. I was like, man, I was like killing it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, it's like God's like, yo, walk with me. That's how I felt with walking my dog. Like, she's, yeah. She's I mean, running. it's just like, 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 because, like Jude. So Jude, 25 verses. And we think like this week we're going to do, I'm going to do um, 11 to 13. So you think that's, that's three verses, right? But... You can read that, and you just skim over it. You're like, okay, I read 25 verses, but what did you read? Just what did you yeah, get well, out? yeah, you just read that, but then you hear like, so if you go read 11 through 13, you're gonna read about the way of Cain. You're gonna hear about um, abandoning for the sake of gain, like Balaam did, and you're gonna hear about Korah, uh, Korah's rebellion. So you really so you've got those three the right there where you're like, okay, well, if you don't know who that is, that gives you three stories now to go read and to break those apart and then to bring what you learn from there forward in order to see. Because you got to think like Jude, the letter was written to people that would have already understood all of the, the yeah. uh, examples and the people that he's bringing up. So he says it. And when they would have read it, they'd be like, okay, like, you know, we get what he's saying. But as Americans, and we're disconnected from not only that side of the planet, but also just completely from that time in history, because it's 65 AD, and then whenever Cain was. uh, 
so it's like you you have to break that apart and die and that's what I love about the Bible because it's like man if, if you're not if you think the Bible's boring it's because you're just not reading it yeah or you're, you're just you're dry reading it going through to hit my devotional time you know keep my streak on you version and that's what some of it some of it is sometimes but like when you, when you pray about it before you read or actually get involved I mean I've I've sat there and read through almost a whole book and was like, all right, well, next. And then yeah. there's been times where one verse all of a sudden just like, boom, I've got, I am so filled. I've got enough for a week, man. Yeah. I'm good. Like, um, so it's just, you pray about it and seek it, dig into it because yeah, ask God to ask God to reveal things to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. you should, we should always be, and, I, and I'll be the first to admit, I don't pray like that every time no. before I read the Bible, like, God, show me. Do, like, I on, usually do. I usually do, but, you know, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and lie and be like, I have a good always streak. say that. You have you a good know? streak going. It's, yeah. That's just, no, no. Life Nobody gets you, man. That. Life yeah. gets you. And then there's the days like that where some days it is just discipline. Yeah. Where you read it and maybe you're not, you know, your head's swimming with the bills you got to pay or whatever, something, whatever at work. Or, you know, maybe just whatever you're tired and you're just kind of doing it to keep the discipline. But I think that's the big aspect is 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 doing it. It sounds almost legalistic. Just... Doing it to do it. That way you keep the routine. You keep it because, you know, like with, with working out or whatever, if I'm like, man, I'm not feeling it today, so I'm not going. Well, then tomorrow I can be like, well, you yeah. know, I'm not feeling it you're now right. today either. And then it's easy to just get off of that. So if you just stick to it Next thing you and know, you go through by. that discipline, like that's where you build your routine. So that's it with the Bible, man. If you just like, hey, I'm not really feeling this right now. And I read that and I don't understand any of it. And I don't feel like God showed me anything, but I did it. Yeah. And I, I built that discipline. And now like you, you build on those blocks and then eventually it just becomes... Something way I, I like it. I like it when I'm just so into it, and it's like I'm not looking at. Okay, finally, I'm getting to this thing. It's where I can soak in, and I've, it's almost getting to the point where I'm like, "What did that even mean?" I want to. Yeah. I want to Google. That's that. what I'm saying. And I'm like, traveling. and the next read. thing you know, you're like ten feet this or oh, know, yeah. my, whatever. You're all the way over here, and you're like, "Wait, what?" It, That's how I've been with with uh, this week. Like this week coming up already, and last week when I was studying for this sermon. Yeah. I, I was, was just like, you're like, man, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm doing Jude. And you're like, okay, I'll read these. I'm in Jude. And the yeah. next thing you know, like I'm in Matthew, I'm in Corinthians, I'm in right. Colossians. I'm just like back in Genesis. Like you just, you end up like just, just sucked into it. And that's when it's, that's when it's awesome. When everything's just like firing and you're just like, man, like give me more, give me more. And when you don't have that, you're, you're craving for it back. You're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It sucks. Like that happens to me. Like, you know, I don't know if people think pastors just get everything but I have so many times where I approach the Bible and yeah, I don't want God just, doesn't just give me this amazing revelation and you're just like I don't yeah. know what any of that really <laughs> says and then even like you know you go to read something else and you're still like uh, you know like I'm not I don't really get yeah. what's going on here and then you have those other days where it's just God's like boom 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 like just download from heaven yeah. and you can't even like write fast enough oh man yeah you I'm go to write and then you lost this thing and you lost that and you're just like well I've got that. like water bills with like <laughs> freaking scriptures and lyrics and this that all scrambled I'm like like kind of putting it together like yeah try, I can't even read my own handwriting because it came so fast so I love it. I love it. There's, there's nothing like just diving in to the Bible, I love, man. And just I love the aha digging. moment, man, when something clicks. You're just like, yeah, just mind blown. And I've like, had a lot of, especially like with this Sunday and then other things. Like you read something, and I don't know how you are. Like I'll be studying. I'll be I'll be at the house or here in the office, and you just like read something, and you just I literally like just push away from the desk. I'm just like, oh. Whoa! <laughs> like what? Just you don't even know. You just like sit back. You're just like when that happened. I realized like whoa. Jesus is like. I hope I'm not offending anyone, but I was like, dude, Jesus is a gangster. <laughs> yeah. I was like the way he taught, like handled. So I was like, you brood of vipers. Like, well, um, you hypocrites. The the the, um, the woman caught in adultery was what did it for me because it's oh like, yeah because I wasn't just looking at it as like he was defending her thing. I was looking at it more of a side of like. Imagine like government, cops, this, that, all these people coming after you trying to get you trapped in a lie and you're that slick to where you're just like, 
okay, who's ever without sin throw the first stone? And like you're like right there in their like in their What's face. The, yeah, like he he like, he laid his like, life whoa, down. Yeah, like they I, couldn't I, kill I, him without that, him laying his own life down. Like, dude, it blew my mind when I fully grasped like the full circle. And I think part of that was. Uh, I believe it was. I don't know if the chosen covered that, did they? I don't think they did. I don't. I haven't. I swear, seen but I could actually picture it in it, my yeah. head. I was able to picture it in my head, and it just like totally blew my mind because I was able to put myself in that time frame, in that mindset. And I'm sure it was also because I've heard a sermon of somebody explaining it better. Because why? Obviously, why we we you know binge watch sermons or do stuff and watch sermon you explain it like i need somebody to explain this because yeah that's what that's why i like it's now just walking through yeah <laughs> just walking through is so much so much better even like for me just studying and everything just like just getting in the bible and just walking th- like i think that's how a lot of it should be done just yeah hey we're gonna start here and we're just gonna go through it and and just we're gonna see what god says yeah and i mean there's so much <laughs> There's so much that we just we we don't get yet and we don't know we don't realize and then like oh, you, you brought know. up the chosen and I love the chosen but what a lot of, and we this, not just them but with different paintings and shows and all that what a lot of people don't I don't what I think a lot of people probably don't realize is all the disciples at the time they were not like fully grown men with beards like they were teenagers right yeah I mean it wasn't and it's 100% like, to the T well, yeah, but, but that's totally what's getting, weird because yeah, yeah. like when, when you read it and even still like as I'm reading the Bible and you read about the disciples and what they're doing you're like you still picture like yeah. you know like oh, somebody man. like our age or someone because Jesus was 30 and then he died at 33 they were in their teens yeah how wild is that I mean that they were teenagers and, and we don't think that we're just like oh and then we see, you know, like shows or movies, and they're all like fully grown men. But it's like, nope, they were teenagers. Fifty year old dude. Huh? <laughs> like, what are we doing? Um, all right, I'm I'm hungry, so I don't want to yeah, cut it same. short. But I'm starving. Yeah. <laughs> Kelsey's always she. Oh, I know she's making. Um, so yeah, Sunday, be here at ten. Come early. Come early, because let me tell you, I'm so tired of seeing when we start the first song, there's not a lot of people here. Everyone comes late. I don't know if that's just something in the South we should be coming expecting. We should be coming. You get there early for a doctor's appointment. We get there early for our job. So church starts at 930 church, now, right? Yeah. And then there'll be starts, yeah, nine, come, We're starting at 930 now. I'm changing the time. That way everybody will come at 10. Um, no, I just it's crazy that we go early to work and everything. Dude, I, I live five minutes from my work. I, I don't know if my boss is going to watch this, but he'll probably call me out and be like, how are you still late? Because <laughs> you don't want to go. I get, I get on kicks, though. I get on kicks, so sometimes I'm 30 minutes early. Sometimes I stay there till like, midnight. Sometimes I'm here. So yeah, I, so it I, equals I, out. I am just such a... Dude, to my time management is terrible. It's 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 a... Uh, it's, uh, whatever. It all, it all balances out. Um, no, but yeah, come early. We're going to do... Uh, continuing this contend series, Jude, if you want to do your homework, Jude 11 through 13. If you want more homework, Genesis 4 for Cain. Cora is numbers f- somewhere around 14, but I don't think it's 14. I think it's a little later. 15, 16? And Balaam is uh, numbers 20 through 22 through 24. And if you really want to study and dive in, and you want to get ahead of Sunday, pay attention to the order that Jude has put them in uh-huh. and the verbs and the nouns. And that's all I'll give you. Hopefully I'll remember to break that down on Sunday <laughs> with everything that I have. Um, but yeah, with that, come early. We're going we're gonna to be continuing this. Um, I just want to pray yeah. before we get off. I want to pray for you. Um, Father, I, I thank you for, for bringing us together. Um, for establishing Jason's relationship with you, for keeping him, bringing him out of the dark. God, I'm thankful that you brought him to this house and established us not just as friends, but as brothers in Christ. God, I pray that you strengthen him so that he becomes more of a light wherever he goes, more of a light to his friends, not just in his past, more of a light to his friends uh, at work as well, God, that you that you keep him in your hands, you keep him protected, 
that Father, you you guide him, and for the words that he doesn't know to say, Lord, that you show him the words to say, that you give him the words to say. And Father, I pray for everybody that's listening to this now, under the sound of my voice, whether it's live or on demand, Lord, that you awaken the church, that you awaken America, that you awaken a reverence in us for just your holy word for your scriptures and who you are. Father, we need the fear of the Lord. So I ask, and I I, I, I boldly ask, Lord, that you that you reestablish the fear of you within all of our hearts, not just believers, but the unbelievers as well, God. I pray that you uh, put our roots even deeper and that you bring revival to St. Augustine, God, that we can take this city back from, from its captivity in, in the demonic strongholds, God. And I come against the spirits that are withholding people within this world, withholding people within this city, God, that you bring revival to St. Augustine, you bring revival to America. God, we pray for the election that you establish who you want on the seat. And God, that it is a godly person with godly values, with biblical values, someone that's not afraid to say that Jesus is Lord, someone that's not afraid to live biblically and to to help establish you back at the throne of this country, God. Lord, we pray, sin revival. Jesus, come and come quickly in the mighty and in the majestic and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus That's, is Lord. Uh, thank you for coming, man. Uh, yeah. Was it anything like you imagined? Um, it, it actually went fairly smooth. I was like, I, I'll be honest, I, was, I had a lot of people praying about it. and like, yeah. hey, man, I want, I want a proper... Uh, Heart posture, man. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, I when you say, hey, you want to share your testimony? So it's like, all right, I feel like it's about me. But it's not really. It's about what God showed to me and what he's done for me. And um, so I, should, I shouldn't be alive a couple times. And I'm here. And I, I thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I accept you as um, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. Jesus, Jesus' name. I mean, thank you. So that's, <laughs> that's it, man. That's I'm the, glad that's you're the here, testimony. Man. I'm glad you're here, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> It's gonna. Uh, you're gonna do. You're gonna do big things. You're gonna do great things. And I think. Uh, I think a lot of people in your life are gonna come to Christ simply that's because. It, that's what it's all about at this point. You're keeping the faith. I mean, I know I'm gonna make people mad. Some people are gonna be mad and against it. It is what it is. I'm gonna have to. Hey, like the parable of the sower, man. Yeah. You were here for revival night. Yeah. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.